this is the float switch connection which is on the back of the reverse osmosis system. The pure water going into the tank is located right here and you'll run tubing from there to the top of the tank. They both have the same type of connectors. With all of this type of connector here, you only hand tighten it. You do not ever want to put a wrench on it because it will strip it out. This connection here gets hooked up going to a drain. Uh, the drain needs to be capable of handling up to about 10 gallon or 5 gallons of water per minute for when the system is in backwash. The main electrical panel is located right here. As you can see, it's got a plug-in plug and we're going to provide two uh, receptacles for the plug. Now, the hot wire for your 220 was going to go, your 240 goes right here. The neutral, or a lot of times people consider it a ground, goes here, and this is a grounded side of the plug. Uh, we're providing two, as I said, which are located right there. This is the feed pump, and we provided connections to screw right into this location here. This is where the city water goes. This is the repressurization pump, also called a delivery pump. The water coming from the pure water tanks gets connected at this connection here. Uh, we'll go over the tank connections in a moment. The water from the system, the pure water that goes out to the fillers, will connect up right here and you will use the same one inch hose as we have right here, the gray hosing tubing, and that will go to your filler. Here's a picture of the way the bottom of the tank should be plumbed. This is the water that's coming out of the tanks and going to the repressurization pump. Uh, just use the connections that are available. It's best to reuse solid one inch pipe and connect to it right here. Uh, the other connection is up on the top of the tanks, which are these here. What happens is the water comes in through the valve, goes through the ozone injector, and gets ozone, and returns it back to both tanks. So this should be plumbed the way that is, and then a pipe would go between the two tanks. The next connection we're talking about is the water that's coming out of the system and comes through this valve, and this goes out to the filler. Uh, the filler connections we'll go over with right now. Each filler has one inlet that area where you would glue a pipe into here. All the pipes provided. You also have the drain which will go to a drain area within your space. Uh, that's the connection for the drain. Uh, the only other thing you need to do is to plug the thing in. To operate the bottle rinser part of the fill table, all you do is push and hold this button for your desired amount of time. Uh, when you're closed, you may want to turn the switch off, we'll turn the power off, and it'll make the ozone last a little bit longer. Uh, there's a bulb in there that creates the ozone, and should last several years without any problems. These are the two valves, filter valves, for the two filters. Uh, they're automatically set to backwash. The only thing you need to do is to backwash them three or four times each upon before you start up the system. To do this, you will need to turn the circuit breaker on in the back of the system labeled feed pumps, which is the one on the left, and turn the plugs on. The feed pump will provide water for the backwash cycle and once it comes up to pressure you want to push and hold this button for about five seconds and the display will change and will automatically go into backwash. This is for both valves. Oh, to turn the feed pump on there's also a switch on the side here to turn it on and off 
if you need to turn it off. You, most of the time you just leave it on and it should be fine. Uh, as shown here on the plug, you see the plus on it. That is the 220 power coming in. The other one would be the neutral or you may consider it a, some sort of a ground there. This is the ground that needs to be grounded for the whole system. Now, to start the RO up, what you'll first have to do is to turn on the circuit breaker saying RO. Then you will come over to the front of the system and turn the power switch on. You want to make sure these valves are open a bit. Only about two turns is necessary. After about three minutes, the pump will come on and the system will start. At that point, what you want to do is turn the waste valve. Most likely you're going to want to turn it clockwise and you're going to want to balance the two floats in here. The two floats, once you get those balanced, everything's working fine. And then to increase the system pressure, you want to turn this valve clockwise until the needle here comes up to 50. Now, the pre-filter gauges here indicate how much water is coming through the 5 micron pre-filter in the back. The 5 micron pre-filter, uh, the reason why we have two gauges here is because one, once the filter becomes dirty, this one will drop down. So say they're both running about 40 pounds of pressure, this one drops down to 30, then you know it's time to change the pre-filter in the back. To change the pre-filter in the back, all you need to do is make sure the power's off on the front, unscrew this canister here, and replace it with a new filter. There is a box of filters located right there. Uh, the one other thing you need to do too on the installation I forgot to cover is the float switch connection. This cord here, you're going to want to run it up to the top of the tank. And you see the two black and white wires there, that's where it gets run to. The pure water inlet is the black connection right here, and you're going to want to run tubing from the back of the flow meters, which is the connection right here. Uh, for these connections, you just, it's best to wet the end of the tubing, shove them in, and tighten them. Hand tighten only. Again, as we've covered before, right here is the connection that goes to a drain for the wastewater.